Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the final SMB College Group uh, virtual Q&A of the evening. I'm Alex, I'm the Marketing Manager here, and I'm joined by Jeff, who is our Section Manager for Countryside and actually all of Landbased as well. Um, so he's going to give you an overview of the courses, um, and please, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat box and we'll get them answered for you. So over to you, Jeff. Thank you, Alex. Um, so yeah, as Alex said, I'm the section manager for the land based industries um, and for the next few minutes we'll be focusing on the countryside management courses. Um, so we we run a level two and a level three course in countryside management um, and also some uh, allied uh, work based learning and sort of apprenticeship routes um, with specialisms in forestry and arboriculture. Um, so yeah, that those are the courses that we run. They uh, the the full time courses give a fairly broad picture of countryside management as a whole and would prepare you to go on to higher education if that was what you were interested in with uh, longer term goals of entering fields such as ecology, environmental management, um, sort of environmental consultancy type roles, or to go straight out into the um, into industry in roles such as sort of countryside ranger, um, engagement officer. There, there, there's an awful lot and, and a very broad range of um, countryside management roles. So, you know, the, the world is your oyster, really, depending on your particular um, interests. Um, and the courses are built up of a range of of modules. There's some exam assessed. Uh, elements um, such as sort of plant and soil science, which is an underpinning part of all the land based subjects. So that's the exam assessed um, and uh, as well as things like professional working practice. Obviously, land based industries can you know, present certain risks that you would not find in an office. Um, you know, lots of practical work outdoors, potentially in bad weather, that sort of thing. So, so we spend some time uh, looking at uh, risk assessment, safe working practices, that sort of thing. And there is a um, an exam, not in the sense of a sit down GCSE exam, but a sort of a um, more of a project based exam where you're given a scenario and, and you have to sort of explain how you would approach that. Uh, and then there's a contemporary issues um, exam as well, which is really important at the moment. There's a lot of changes in countryside and environmental management with new legislation coming in, um, new grant schemes relating to environmental stewardship and that sort of thing with, um, you know, big overhauls to that. So there's lots of current yeah. industry changes that we need to stay on top of uh, and the contemporary issues unit allows us to do that. Um, but then aside from those three sort of exam units, there's lots of other specialist units dealing with particular types of habitat, looking at farm habitat management, looking at wetlands, looking at woodlands, um, you know, the whole whole range of um, sort of countryside and environmental skills that you would need, um, practical estate management skills uh, and the, the sort of surveying and practical side of conservation and environmental management as well. Um, on the apprenticeship side, th that's we're looking at sort of forestry and arboriculture particularly there. Um, so we've got the forest operative apprenticeship with pathways in harvesting all establishment of woodlands and then the arboriculture which is the sort of tree surgery route um, and those those courses that you know that most of the work there would be done with an employer <coughs> um, but through the college you'd also get lots of additional qualifications that are needed to enter that industry um, so yeah that's that's where we're at with the courses really that's that's the overview um, in terms of equipment to support all of those um, you know we we would expect students to have you know their own um, you know decent outdoor clothes so that they can be warm and comfortable working out of doors and their own steel toe cap boots um, and, and things like that when it comes to specialist PPE such as chainsaw trousers helmets that sort of thing we can provide that um, if you 
if you're on one of the apprenticeships, you will need your own because you'll need those on a day to day basis. But likelihood is your, your employer will probably help provide those. If you know you're going into that field, it might be worth in uh, as a full time student. It might be worth investing in your own PPE. But like I said, we have we have everything that is required to equip you with the very specialist kit that you need. Chainsaws, chainsaw protective equipment, tractor, you know, or, or tractors. The big tools that you need we don't expect you to provide that obviously we do and we have uh, have a a nice shiny new fleet of um of john deere equipment for the the machinery side of the the countryside courses um and you know the yeah, whole nine yards when it comes to kit and equipment you'll just need to make sure you've got waterproofs and boots really Brilliant. We've had a of questions. <coughs> um billy has asked and um, we talk about chainsaws quite a lot and billy has asked yep. will we be using chainsaws in countryside management and what level would that be at uh so the the um the apprenticeships which involve a lot of um chainsaw use are they're both level two apprenticeships uh but then on the level two and three courses that there is access to chainsaws more so on the level three um where you will need them to do some of the woodland management elements uh, practical elements um so yeah certainly access to chainsaws training provided through the course if you're if you want one of the chainsaw qualifications there is a um it, it, it comes as part of the apprenticeship but for a full-time student on a level two or level three diploma or extended diploma if you wanted to get the that additional qualification you would have to pay for it but we do offer preferential rates to students so you could do it through the college cheaper than you might somewhere else so you, you know you have access to the training that would prepare you for it and if you wanted to go on and get the certificate there's there's that possibility as well um, can you tell us the difference between the level one and the level two? Somebody's asked. Uh, difference between the level one and the level two. So the, yeah. the we do have a level two that is a specific countryside management level two. Um, the level one is a general land based level one, which will include a little bit of agriculture, a little bit of countryside, a little bit of horticulture um, and equip you then to specialise post level one if that's what you want to do into one of the various land based streams but but the level one itself is a combination of all the different subjects so you don't need to do the level one before you do the level two do you it's it's more of an no. option if you don't get the grades that you need to do the level two or three um or perhaps if you if you're feeling a bit nervous about coming back into college and you want to have a really good overview of the courses to, to help you decide exactly right yeah yeah, yeah. it's going to countryside or ag or hot um, later on as well. Lovely. Um, can girls do this course? Absolutely. Um, we've had lots of girls do the course before. Um, and uh, yeah, please. Yeah, it's absolutely for anybody who wants to do it. Our land based courses are pretty evenly split, aren't they, actually, between um, male and female. So definitely don't let that um, put you off if you're a bit nervous about being the only girl. It certainly won't be the case. Um, Jack has asked how much of the course is inside and how much is outside? Um, it's difficult to put a hard number on it there will be times of year when you spend a lot of time indoors because you might be coming up to preparing for an exam um, or it might just be that during that season there is less outdoor work to do that is the nature of the land-based industry we are tied to the seasons uh, and sometimes normally in the winter you find that there's an awful lot of outdoor work to do because that's when we plant trees that's when we coppice that's when we uh, we do a lot of the woodland management work it the season dictates that we do that in the winter um so there will be times of year when when you do more practical and times that you do less but if you, if you were to average it out for the whole course you're probably looking at about about a 60 40 split theory to practical that's probably not precise, but it, it's about that. Right. Um, do you need to do work experience during the course? Yeah, you definitely need to do work experience. It is part of the course. Um, so we're looking for about 300 hours over the two years of a level three course, 150 hours a year. So the if, if you were to do one year as a standalone diploma, 
um, then 150 hours is what you'd need. Same for the level two. Um, and it, it's a really important part of, uh, of of any course, really, because it allows you to use the skills that you've learned at college to um, apply them to the industry that you're hoping to work in um, uh, and to get a bit more practice of them and also to get feedback from somebody that's in industry. Obviously, you're you in a, a lesson, a practical or, or with assignments and assessments from you, you'll get feedback from your lecturers, from your tutors. Um, but it's always helpful to have that feedback from someone that's currently in the job, even though we all um, you know, we still are engaged in land based in, you know, I still work in um, my specialism of deer and woodland management on the side. So we, we, all, all the lecturers you have are engaged in land based industries. It's nice to have it from a from an employer because um, it will it, it's a good representation of how you will experience countryside management when you finish college and go to work. Yeah. yeah. What sort of places do people do their work experience at? Um, because countryside management is so broad, we've had a whole range. We've had people do work placements with foresters, with tree surgeons, and you know they're the kind of people that then want to go on possibly to do one of the apprenticeships. But we've had people do them with um, on farms where you get that overlap between countryside management and agriculture. We've had people do work placements on nature reserves, um, you know, with gamekeepers all you know the whole the whole range of um of land-based sort of countryside roles um really and that that's the beauty of it there isn't one sort of one type of employer you could you yeah, could cool. do you could there, there's an awful lot of opportunities within education and countryside management as well things like forest schools and recreation management that would be an equally applicable um work placement so yeah loads of opportunities yeah, and another question which follows on quite nicely actually is does the course involve conservation? Absolutely. So we um you know con conservation is um you know countryside management by another name really. Um there are units within the course that deal with the conservation of particular types of habitat um and within that the species that inhabit those habitats um so yeah a, a lot of conservation a lot of the skills for um the kind of uh, survey skills and um management planning skills that go alongside conservation so how to write a habitat management plan how to conduct a habitat survey which are the things you need that then inform how you can serve a habitat you need you need to be able to do all the you know the iding of various species whether those are birds plants animals invertebrates whatever you, you those underpinning skills are delivered and then you'll learn how to take action to conserve or improve or maintain those habitats. Great, thank you. Um, Billy has asked, will we be mowing grass in the countryside management course? Um, it's not out of the question that you might end up mowing some grass. It's not it's not a big part of the course. Um, you, you certainly learn to use machinery. Um, uh, that might include mowing equipment, whether that's sort of tractor mounted. Um, the the countryside students help with our agroforestry um, project, so they have fairly recently mowed some grass in, you know, not it, it, not like mowing a garden lawn, but that, you know, they've taken a tractor and a flail mower and cut some rides through some tall grass to provide a habitat for um we happen to have some grey partridges which are a red listed species um that have taken up residence on our agroforestry plot and it's a really it makes a really nice habitat for them so they they've effectively just cut this really tall grass which is good habitat for the habitat for the the butterflies and moths and various other things that are living in it cut some rides through there so you've got patches of short grass within it that those birds will then come out and feed in and, and um, sun themselves um, so yeah they, they have mown that grass and they've mown a bit around some of the other trees that we've planted and they'll strim around trees and hedges to stop 
stop new planted trees and shrubs being choked up by uh, grasses and weeds but but mowing grass in the sort of the garden sense they'll probably not do a great deal of that was the um <laughs> we've had a question now i can answer just give you a little breather um do we need to let the college know our gcse results or wait till enrollment um you are right you wait just bring them along to enrollment with you um hopefully you've had an invitation to enrollment if you've applied to start for this september um if not, please, please let us know. Um, enrollment is taking place the week of the 23rd of August. Um, yeah, Land-based one's on the 26th. 26th is countryside management. There you go. Um, so that's that's at Brooksby, of course, as well. Um, and also in the next couple of days, you will receive a student welcome pack through the post. Um, so there's a few little gifts in there, but there's also some information about um, induction week and a lot of the things that Jeff just touched on in terms of um, what kit you need and things like that. Um, but essentially just what you can expect during your first week at college. So just make it a little bit easier for you when you arrive. Um, lovely. OK, um, just time. Jeff, um, could you talk to us a little bit about the facilities that we've got? You've talked about the agroforestry uh, project that we've got going on. Uh, maybe a bit about that and, and what else? Yeah, sure. to say. yeah so the, the agroforestry is something we're particularly proud of because we are we're not the only college with doing any agroforestry, but we have the biggest bit, so we'll we'll boast about that bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> we've got 21 acres that's turned over to Silvo Pastoral Agroforestry, which means it is designed to be grazed by livestock. So we've got a field with three lines of trees in it that are a mix of um, trees that will be, you know, they're planting trees is great for the environment it sequesters carbon which is something you'll learn an awful lot about in contemporary issues and various other units on your course because it's tree planting is a big part of new legislation and sort of government directives about environmental management so it, it achieves that but trees do a lot more than that they draw up nutrients from deeper down in the soil than the grasses and arable crops that might normally be in there so it, it is good for soil management um, but all the trees we selected have other sort of useful properties as well in that we will over time we will be able to harvest them sustainably for coppice products or for animal fodder or fruit um, and some of them have been selected particularly because um, they're valuable for bees for pollination um, so we've got some lime trees in there not lime the fruit it's a, a native lime lime tree um, you'll see a lot of them on the Brooksby campus actually we've got some really big mature ones on the grounds as well as new ones that we've planted so it uh, the trees themselves serve to, yeah a lot of different purposes within agroforestry. They'll provide shade for livestock as well as all those other things I've mentioned. And then in a rotation, livestock can be grazed on the uh, the herbal lay. So it's not just grass in between the trees. It's got species like clovers um, <clears throat> and lucerne and all sorts of other things in there. So it, it's really high quality grazing for livestock. Um, and I mean, obviously there's overlaps here with the agriculture courses you can probably tell um, but countryside management and, and agriculture do go hand in hand um, so that that's a great resource across our land-based courses and something you'd be involved with as a countryside management student um, we also as part of the, sort of the agroforestry um, enterprise we we've planted over a hundred willow trees that will long after you lot have graduated um you know 15 20 odd years from now will be harvested and turned into cricket bats um so we've got we've got um those that you'll look after as well um but as well as the agroforestry we've got we've got the college farm um and grazing within it is quite an important thing within conservation as well to to maintain um, certain habitats so you'll you'll have access to the farm to learn a bit about handling livestock that might be used for conservation grazing um, you'll have access to our tractors and uh, practical tools like i mentioned earlier chainsaws um, all that sort of thing um, so there, yeah, there, there's an awful lot of you know, practical facilities that you'll have access to. The fact that Brooksby has the you know grounds as well um, that 
are comparable to sort of national trust estates, the kind of places that you might end up working as countryside managers, means that you get to work within those um, and learn how to, you know, work on the trees and the the, the habitats. We've got a lot of ponds and um, riverside access as well. So we, our uh, college farm borders the River Reek, um, so you'll be involved in a bit of bankside management there. Um, we've got a network of ponds and pools and lakes as well that you'll work on, um, as well as hedgerows and various other habitats on the college estate. And then we we step off the college estate as well and go on visits to other places um, to broaden your horizons a bit and look at um, look at conservation and wildlife management, countryside management elsewhere too. Oh, thank you. Um, Jack has asked how many days a week is the course? It will be four days a week. So it's technically full time, um, but that sort of extra day gives you the opportunity to do your, your studies outside of, of the classroom as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. To, to go and do a work placement or yeah, get your assignments done. Right. And is there much crossover between horticulture and agriculture as well as with countryside management? So on the level two, the, the countryside and horticulture level twos, some of the units are taught together. Um, so in that respect, yes, there is some crossover. There will be a little bit of crossover between the level three countryside management and horticulture programmes on some of the more theoretical units like plant and soil science. It depends a bit on what how many of, uh, of you lot end up um, studying with us. You might you might be in a class of just countryside managers. You might be in a in a combined group for some of the common units like plant and soil science with horticulture. Um, some of the skills certainly cross over with agriculture, but there aren't any um, lessons that will be taught together with them. Thank you. Just popping the, um, the URL for where you can apply in the chat box, but there are links all over the virtual open day pages. Um, I well, just finished there actually with we're, we're just about out of time. So um, if anyone is thinking of applying for this September, there is still time. Um, but as Jeff said, um, enrollment is the 26th of August. So um, get your application as soon as possible so we can get that sorted for you. Um, and yes, once you put in an application, you'll be invited for um, a phone interview. Um, it's quite an informal process, but it's just the opportunity for you to ask any questions you might have and for us to make sure it's the right course for you. Um, and then induction week will take place on the week of the 31st of August. Um, and there'll be more information about, about that in your um, student welcome pack that you would receive as once you've had an offer as well. Um, we've just got time, we've got one more question. Um, is there any um, work that you're doing repairing machinery if you need to? Yeah, a little bit. So the, the machinery unit will include basic maintenance of relevant machines as well. So, you know, um, the full. I mean, the full works when it comes to maintaining chainsaws, because that's an important part uh, of that. Uh, when it comes to bigger kit like tractors, basic maintenance, changing oil filters, that sort of thing um, is part of it. Brilliant. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, that's all we've got time for this evening. Um, thank you for joining us and thank you for all the questions, um, everyone that's typed them in. Um, and hopefully we'll see you in September this year, if not next year. <laughs> thank you very much and thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks everyone.